Good afternoon, Toby Kohler here for another edition of Mayo Men's Health Moment. Today we're going to talk about BPH, otherwise known as benign prostatic hyperplasia or prostate problems. So what good is the prostate anyway, or what is it? Well, as you can see from the picture here, the prostate is a walnut-sized gland at the uh, base of the bladder. Uh, it basically surrounds the urethra, the urinary tube uh, through which uh, the urine flows. Its only real purpose is to help produce fluid uh, that helps transport the sperm during ejaculation. Other than that, the only purpose the prostate has is to keep guys like me in business because it just causes a lot of problems as we get older. Here we see a high-definition picture of the prostate. I'm kidding. Of course, this is a donut with a mustache on it. Uh, the reason I show you this picture is the analogy I uh, make for patients is that you know, when you urinate, you're basically th you're urinating through the donut hole of the donut, if your prostate is a donut. And what happens is that donut hole gets smaller as we age because the prostate gets bigger. And so pretty much any treatment we perform to try to treat the prostate attempts to either relax the muscles around that hole so it becomes bigger or less strained, or surgery actually opens up that opening in a variety of ways, which we'll get to later. So what is BPH? Well, BPH, again, is an acronym for benign prosthetic hyperplasia, also known as the enlarged prostate. Keep in mind that this is a non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate gland. Prostate cancer and BPH are two separate conditions. Uh, sometimes you can get both at the same time because they both tend to occur when you get older, but just because you have BPH does not mean you have prostate cancer or vice versa. Uh, there is a one test called a PSA blood test, which uh, doctors will check to screen you for prostate cancer. This blood test can actually be elevated in both cancer and BPH, and so that's why it gets even more confusing sometimes. Okay, so what happens as you age? Well, first of all, remember that 26 million men each year in the United States are affected by BPH. It's a lot of men. If you basically look at the decade of life that men are in, about that same percent will have in a large prostate. That is to say, at age 60, about 60% of men have in large prostate. At age 80, 80% 80 have in large prostate, and so on. Of those men that have in large prostate, approximately half will actually have symptoms that warrant some kind of intervention or a visit to the doctor. As we discussed earlier, as the prostate enlarges, it begins to put pressure on the urethra. That donut hole starts to fill in. This makes it difficult to empty the bladder and causes problems. Typically, especially when these first things uh, start out, it's not life-threatening. It's more of an inconvenience. Uh, in general, the size of the prostate does not necessarily correlate to the severity of symptoms. So that is to say, some men can have a really, really big prostate but have no problems whatsoever, and other men can have a small prostate and have a lot of problems. However, it tends to happen as we get older, the prostate gets bigger and it tends to cause more issues. So what are the symptoms? Well, you're going to end up urinating more frequently. You'll also get up in the middle of the night more often. Uh, some men will feel a sudden urge to urinate. Uh, some men will find it difficult to start or stop the stream, and it may actually hurt. They will have a very weak flow. Uh, and then finally, they feel like they never really empty their bladder. You can imagine if the average adult male bladder is about 400 milliliters, which is about 13 ounces, uh, if you never really empty it out, how you would have to go more often since the tank never gets empty. Well, why do these symptoms matter? At the end of the day, BPH really affects quality of life. BPH can get so severe that men will avoid travel. They'll avoid activities uh, that they enjoy, like you know, going to the movies or going golfing or whatever it is, just because they're afraid that they're going to have to run to the bathroom or they're going to have problems urinating, etc. Uh, it also is very disruptive for sleep patterns. Uh, you know, Men who have to get up three or four times in the middle of the night to urinate never really get a good night's sleep, and that affects how they feel uh, during the day as well. Well, how is it this uh, BPH diagnosed? Well, if you go see a physician specifically about this problem, most of the exam will involve just talking and filling out questionnaires to kind of get at how severe your symptoms are and how much of a bother it is to you. 
when these symptoms first start out, it is perfectly reasonable to just kind of watch things and see how they progress. You don't necessarily have to do anything unless you're bothered by the symptoms. Uh, there is one portion of the physical exam, which is the rectal exam, which a lot of guys uh, you know, are afraid of and you hear a lot of jokes about. It takes about 30 seconds uh, and gives the doctor a good idea of how big uh, the prostate is. And it also is a great screening test for prostate cancer when combined with that PSA blood test, which we discussed earlier. Now, keep in mind that most of the time, you, we don't have to treat BPH unless it becomes bothersome. However, there are some times where we for sure have to do something, whether that's surgery or medications, depends. But if you have urinary retention, that is to say you can't empty the bladder effectively anymore, you have to do something. If you develop recurrent infections, if you develop bladder stones, upper tract kidney damage, or the prostate is uh, bleeding as it gets bigger and that doesn't stop, these are all reasons why we actually have to do something as opposed to just observe it. So there are several treatment options for BPH or an enlarged prostate, and different treatments are appropriate for different patients. Now, future videos in this series will talk about these uh, individual treatments and their risk benefits, uh, etc. But I will just briefly cover what can be done. So we spoke earlier about watchful waiting. Uh, you can just observe the symptoms as long as they're not bothersome or they're not causing any of those really problematic things we had on the previous slide. Next, we can try medications. Uh, most of these medications are covered by insurance, but they are once-a-day medications, uh, and they can cause some side effects which men don't like. However, it's a good first step uh, if you're not ready for procedure. And then the next four treatments are all basically either done in the office or done in the operating room, and they expand the size of that donut hole from that picture that we uh, showed earlier, whether it's uh, a traditional TERP. This is uh, the surgery that's been done for about 50 years to treat prostate problems where you basically cut out the extra prostate tissue, or whether it's some of the newer treatments like Eurolift, which uses a clip to hold the prostate open, or Resume, which uses steam to open up the prostate. Finally, laser therapies are also available. Lasers come in all uh, shapes and sizes. Green light laser is something that I used for uh, years, and a whole lep uh, laser procedure is especially good for uh, very, very large uh, prostates, and that's something that we offer here as well. I hope you found today's video on BPH helpful and informative. We've got several physicians here at Mayo Rochester uh, ready to take care of your BPH problems. Uh, if you'd like an appointment, please call the number as shown on the slide. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.